I'm Brazilian. I came here to the United States six years ago. And I came with my husband and two kids. And I have a third, a, a third child here three years ago. And I have three bees, Veronica, Valeria, and Victor. <laughs> This, the first and the second was just bees. The third was, no, my husband, no, I want another bee. <laughs> uh, well, I will talk about how I turned to God, when, and, uh, uh, and I was 17 when I, I could see clearly God was in my life. When I was 13, my mom realized she had cancer. Everything happened in Brazil. So I was 13, I have a twin sister, she was 13, another brother 14, and another brother 13, 14, 5, 15. So four kids, and my mom was pretty sick. So she realized she had cancer, stage four. She had breast cancer, but was so big, and was already spreading to the other parts of the body. So it was like a kind of metastasis. Uh, uh, and I was 13, and I didn't believe in God anything, because my father was, didn't believe in God. My mom was raised in a, such a strict envir environmental, not Catholic, just strict. And, and in the 60s, when she was like 20-something, she raised in a... Many of you know, in the 60s, what happened? Okay. Condos, freedom, yeah, yeah. Uh, freedom, you can do whatever you wanna. Uh, so my mom, without any religion, she raised, she, she met my father. Um, but you know, it was kind of freedom everywhere. And we were raised without any religion, no. Nothing. My mom, she was very devoted to the, to the Blessed Mary, uh, and, but she didn't go to the Mass and all said the Rosary, nothing, nothing. Uh, and then I, I saw myself, 13, my mom sick, doing a surgery after another surgery, kind of a little bit confusing. When I was like 14, I met, uh, I had a teacher in the school, I was in middle school, and she was a member of Opus Dei. Yeah, I don't know who knows who is Opus Dei. Opus Dei. Opus Dei. It's a Catholic institution. I am a member. Uh, so I met Opus Dei when I was 14, and this teacher invited me to go to do some social works with people. And she said, "Well, no, it's a Catholic institution. We do. Uh, we have mass." Uh, we have uh, so social activities with poor people. Well, Brazil is a very poor country, so it's easy. We can do social works everywhere. Uh, and I start going. I thought, wow, nice, do something useful. Uh, but until, until then, nothing about faith. I didn't want to, you know? I didn't understand anything about God. For me, God was just something too far. Uh, and my mom was sick. To, since a year before, we, and I heard she was getting worse and worse, year by year. Uh, so for two years, when I was 14, 15, until 17, I was participating in these social activities during the weekend, uh, going to favelas, uh, uh, doing very nice uh, uh, social activities. And, and in the summer also, in the summer we used to travel like 30, 40 people uh, to go to the countryside and do a lot of activities with women, with uh, girls, super nice. And I realized some of, some of the people of the group were waking up so early and going back like two hours after, like four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning. And then I didn't realize what's going on here. And then one day I asked, where are you going? Every day in the morning. Uh, and then when I said, oh, we go to the Mass. We are members of Opus Day. we go to the Mass every day, we do mental prayer. Well, what the heck? <laughs> nice. And one day I asked, well, it was two weeks, a uh, two weeks trip with this group. And then one day I asked, I wanna go, can I go? Of course, let's go. 
So I went there. We took a, like a, a, a car with like 12, 10, 12 people. We went to the mass so far, like 40 minutes to, to, to go to a church and go to the mass. And that, so I went to the mass for the first time in my life, like Tuesday or Thursday, whatever. It was a very short mass. And people say the rosary and go and back saying the rosary. Wow, that's amazing. And, and then that was, and I was listening to a song, a very beautiful song, and that song was stuck in my, my, my head. Wow, what's that? <laughs> I never heard about this. In my house, never. And this I was 17. And, and then we came back from this trip, that was two weeks trip, and I asked, you know, I want to be Catholic. How can I do? This is so amazing. Uh, well, you can, but you need to. Are you baptized? I think so. I have a picture that I was baptized. So, okay, since you are baptized, you can. You just do your confession and you, you can start. So right away, I, I did my confession and I started going to the Mass. Right away, my mom, I was 17, my mom died when I was 18. So at that time, my mom was really, really sick after several surgeries. So my hand was, my head was like confusing. My mom is dying. And well, I started going to the Mass on Sundays and I could see just Sunday. Well, I wanted more. So I started going every day. And my mom, worse, 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 worse. And until a time I started praying for her to die because she was really, really bad. And I was going to the Mass. I, I used to live in a, in, a, in a very nice neighborhood in front of a Catholic school. And so I could go to the, just across the street, there was like the middle, uh, a little chapel with some nuns. I had dinner with them several times. It was so amazing. And so I, was, I started praying for my mom to 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 die soon because she was suffering a lot. But on the other hand, I was worried about her because she lived a very freedom life and her youth was not that good. So I was talking, no, I want to get married. I want to, you know, I want to stand by my faith. I was mocked by my relatives, my father, my, my best friends, you know. But, you know, I will stand. This is my faith and then I will, I will, I will go until the end. And I did. It was not easy, but I did it. And so a little, a little bit before, my mom died in 1990. I was 18. I turned 18 in May. Uh, it was good because I could help my father to drive my mom to the hospital and doing treatments. And she fell in Mother's Day in May. She broke her femur. Is this femur? Yeah. So she broke the femur and she died with the cast. Because, you know, she had metastasis, probably the cancer was in the bones, or, or uh, probably, and she fell, she broke the bones, and, and it was so hard to, to treat my mom. Uh, she was smelling so bad, because the cancer came back and was outside, was in the skin. Uh, carrion is the name, when you smell so bad, so she was smelling so bad, and not, even my father could not be close to her anymore. So I was the one that was treating her, I was sleeping with her, uh, I used to, to give her a shower. I could, because I had faith, and that gave me this strong, I don't know how, but gave me. And so I was praying for her every day to, to know God take her, but please, before take her, she needs to convert. She was feeling guilty, that's why she was so accommodated with my faith. Because I was, you know, I was trying to behave good, and the, 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 what I had in my house was completely different. And so I was praying for her a lot. Okay, please, first, her conversion, second, take her soon, because she suffered a lot. And about two months before she died, two, three months, I don't know exactly, how, but like this, one day she, she, she told me, call a priest. I want to, I want to, uh, I need to confess. And I used to go to the Mass every day, and the priest was like, I was like the little girl in the church. I used to, to, 
to, you know, ring the bell for the Mass uh, during the consecration. So I called the priest and he came right away. Oh, Fernando, I'm going right now. And he came and my mom received the three sacraments. The, the anointment of the sick, the confession, and, and the Holy Eucharist. And since then, she received the Holy Communion every day until she died. A priest, if the priest could not come, one of the nuns in the school will come. So every day somebody was in my house to give the Holy Communion to my mom. But before this, she was so nervous. She couldn't leave because she was so, like, how can I go and leave my husband with four teenagers? Uh, so, so she was so nervous. Uh, and after that day, I could see she was so peaceful because she had got. And so she received the Holy Communion until, until like, some days before she died. She was home receiving morphine, a lot of medications, and one day my father uh, decided, okay, it's time for her to go to the hospital and die in the hospital. She cannot die here. It will be so stressful for the family. And that day she received the Communion for the last day, for the last time. She went to the hospital. And four or five days after, she died. But in the hospital, she was out, completely out. They gave her a lot of morphine uh, because she had, she had pain all body. And, and, and the last night, I was there in the hospital with my brother. So he stayed with me. It was the, the worst day of my life because she suffered a, a lot throughout the night. And eight, eight o'clock in the morning, my father came, my brothers came, my sister came, and I was sleeping in the couch. <laughs> and she died. And then, Fernanda, Fernanda, wake up! She, you know what happened? We bought the, 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 the cast, you know? The casket. We bought everything, and we arranged everything. Uh, in Brazil, we do different. When a person dies, we just do the funeral in the same day. We don't do it like here. We wake three, four, five days. No, we do it like the same day. And we had a funeral in the same day. The priest that was giving her the communion was there, uh, support, giving all the support. Was so was not a priest opus day. Was a, a parishioner priest in the front of my house, and of course people, my friends from opus day, praying a lot for her, for her conversion because she knew how she was. And so I, without without opus day, I could never make it. Made that I, I um, and now, today, I work at Willows. Willows is a school for girls in this place. I work there as a volunteer. Uh, I'm an engineer, so I tutor uh, middle school and high school math, physics, and chemistry. Uh, it's, it's a vol voluntary job, uh, but I'm doing... Uh, I have to do something, because I receive so much graces from, from, from the work, from Opus Day, and I, I thought, you know, I have to do something. It's now is my time. It's my time to return. And so after the funeral, uh, my friends came back home and we did a party. Can you believe? Yeah. We did a party until the other day. Wow. The party started like five o'clock in the afternoon, in the evening. It was on Friday. And we, my brother plays guitar. We brought all the friends, they brought the guitar also. And we, we, bought, we, bought, we bought two, three boxes of beer. And we were celebrating because she was in heaven. And we had a party. We sang all night. was the best part ever. Why? We were celebrating she was in heaven. And you asked me about some tips I could, I could give to, to you. I would say three things. Uh, this is a tripod, correct? Yeah. Okay, tripod is like this, correct? Yeah. Three legs. Without the two legs, we cannot be stand, right? So I would say, uh, if you want to have a, a good, good spiritual life, we need three things. First, mental prayer. Without mental prayer, if you don't pray to God every day a little bit, it doesn't need to be too much. But if you don't pray every day, me and God, God and you, you know, it's hard to keep going. So one leg, I would say, it's important, so important, mental prayer. A second leg, I think, is, is, is the most one. Daily Mass. 
if you can, uh, most of the people they go to the mass Sundays. But if you really think about it, that God gave Himself and He's there waiting for you, He's there. How can you go just Sunday? It's impossible. That's why right after I I I I I started going to the mass, I thought you know, just Sunday. No. So daily mass. If you most I met many of you, many of you I know go to mass every day. If you don't go, think about it. It's good. Go to mass every day. You cannot every day three times a week, two times, four times a week, you know. When you just you know, are realizing you are going every day. So this is the second leg. The third leg that I think is super important. Uh, we're supposed to take a shower every day. Or at least two times a week or something. <laughs> Not you, you smell a little bit. Uh, what about confession? We, sh we should confess more often. So this is the third leg. Mental prayer, daily mass, and confession. And I will recommend you go to confession at least once a month. You know, once a month. It's not too much. Some people go once a year. Uh, people sometimes don't go for confession for 30 years, 40 years. You know, 40 years without going to confession is it's too long. If you don't go for confession for so long, you think, oh, this is, this is not a sin. This is just a, a mini sin. And then the big sins will be mini, and the mini sins will be nothing. We'll, we'll lose the, the notion of what is correct and what is not correct for us. Well, questions? Yeah? Could you just briefly explain the work? Okay, about Opus Dei. Okay. Opus Dei, I have here, I brought uh, some, some of this, if you want It's a Catholic institution, was founded by a priest. Uh, San Jose Maria. So uh, he founded uh, Opus Dei uh, in Spain in 1928. It has members all over the world. So uh, I met Opus Dei in Brazil. Opus Dei is Argentina, Venezuela, Nicaragua, United States, France, Spain, whatever. And he died in, the founder of Opus Dei died in 1975. And his successor, Alvaro de Portillo, he was in his place for 19 years, and he died in 1994. This second person, so the, his successor, was beatified last week, oh. Alvar de Portillo. If you saw EWTN, you could see something about Alvar de Portillo. So he was beatified last week in November 27, and he was a very good person. He was a priest also. His, uh, before he was a priest, he was an engineer. You know, great people are engineers. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Uh, so Alvaro was uh, a successor of, of San Jose Maria, the first successor, and now we have a second one. The second one is 81, 82, I don't remember how old he is. So, but this is Opus Dei. It's a Catholic institution. If you want to have this, you can see the website. And, uh, they have members all over the world. Normally, there are three kinds of members. The priests, the, the people that are married, like me, like my husband, and the people that don't get married. These people, men and women, they, they don't get married because they, they want to be available 100% of the time uh, to, the, to, to do apostolate, to, to bring Jesus to other people. So these people, but you cannot count them uh, uh, Nuns, because there are, there are no nuns. There are people that decided, okay, I'm not going to get married because I want to have more time. I, but the, the, the vocation is the same. What was they is uh, you, you can be sent in the middle of the world. So I am a nurse. How can I be a saint if I am a nurse? Well, do your work well done, and then you can go to heaven. Oh, I am, I am a bus driver. A tax driver, how can I be sad? Well, well, do your job, well done, offer your job every day to God, and then you can go to heaven. So this was what St. Jose Maria saw in 1928. We need to support the church. This is the communion of the saints. You know what is communion of the saints? 
the church in heaven, the church in purgatory, and us. So we have to pray for each other. The ones in heaven, they pray for us. We have to pray for the ones in purgatory. And when they leave the purgatory, they go to heaven, they will help us. So this is the communion of the saints. We have to pray for each other. No more questions? Thank you, guys. <laughs>